Hi, um, I'm here with Fulk uh, Schoening, who's here for, uh, to present our, uh, the competition se session of the Blockchain Forum that we're running here at OECD. Um, thanks for agreeing to, to say a few okay. words with us, Fulk. Um, if I just launch straight into uh, to a couple of questions. Sure. Um, I, as I understand it, you're going to talk to us a little bit about um, access to private blockchains. Uh, could you tell us a bit about what the concern could be there? Right, yeah. Let's probably start by not even calling it a concern. I think it's more mm. applying the general competition law theories on access to any closed infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So in the old days, you would have probably thought about access to a port because you need that port to sure. transfer your goods somewhere. But in the digital field, it's obviously about access to a certain technology, to software, to a system set up by technology. Mm. And by definition, a closed blockchain as the name suggests, is not open to everybody, but only mm. to the members. And the question that I hope we can discuss today yeah. is, is there a competition law issue? And if yes, um, how can we solve it? Okay. And so um, I suppose, I, I, as you say, there have been previous sort of um, uh, attempts at, uh, or previous cases that have, have looked at these sort of issues. Um, can we draw anything from those as to whether there are like blockchains are likely to be seen as areas where we yeah, access needs to an, be provided? Yeah, an, an interesting question indeed, because as you may know so far, I'm at least not aware of any competition law enforcement really a real case in the blockchain area. Yeah. Um, and that's not surprising because it's a new technology. Mm -hmm. But what we see is uh, competition law enforcement in the digital area. Mm -hmm. And that's why I believe um, the, the pace is pretty high mm -hmm. and um, the blockchain group, so to say, the people interested in that um, are well advised to think about it. And yes, I think um, there is one interesting example. If you want, I can share a minute uh, talking mm -hmm. about that. There was a dawn raid, so an unannounced inspection, mm -hmm. um, competition authorities in Poland and in the Netherlands against certain banks okay. who refused access to some um, fintech players, so to new competitors in their field, sure. uh, who wanted to get access to customer data. And the customer ha customers had consented to giving that data to the new players, yeah. but the old players said no. Right. And, and that's a question um, where the competition authorities will investigate is that data, is access to that data really indispensable for being active on a market? Yeah. Because if it is, then we might run into a competition law problem. Yeah, okay. And I guess the, the, the other possible angle on, on those, on the concerns that drive uh, access sort of remedies is often um, whether, whether interoperability might be a, 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 an alternative solution to these sort of things. Right, right, yeah. Interoperability could be an option for uh, remedying such a yeah, case where yeah. you say, um, it's, it's okay if there are certain standards and also yeah. if you think about factors like data privacy um, or security issues of a mm. network, these are uh, criteria that may well justify mm. closing the blockchain to those who uh, qualify for certain criteria. Yeah. Um, but indeed, um, interoperability in order to make sure that those who should have access based mm. on objective criteria um, really get it, that could be an option. Okay. Okay, well, look forward to the uh, discussion. So Thanks do I. Very much. Thank you. <laughs>